An ironclad is a steam-propelled warship protected by iron or steel armor plates used in the early part of the second half of the 19th century. The ironclad was developed as a result of the vulnerability of wooden warships to explosive or incendiary shells. The first ironclad battleship, Glowery, was launched by the French Navy in November 1859. The British Admiralty had been considering armoured warships since 1856 and prepared a draft design for an armoured corvette in 1857. In early 1859 the Royal Navy started building two iron-hulled armoured frigates, and by 1861 had made the decision to move to an all-armoured battle fleet. After the first clashes of ironclads took place in 1862 during the American Civil War, it became clear that the ironclad had replaced the unarmored ship of the line as the most powerful warship afloat. This type of ship would come to be very successful in the American Civil War. Ironclads were designed for several roles, including as high seas battleships, coastal defense ships, and long-range cruisers. The rapid evolution of warship design in the late 19th century transformed the ironclad from a wooden hulled vessel that carried sails to supplement its steam engines into the steel-built, turreted battleships and cruisers familiar in the 20th century. This change was pushed forward by the development of heavier naval guns, more sophisticated steam engines and advances in metallurgy which made steel shipbuilding possible. The quick pace of change in the ironclad time meant that many ships were obsolete as soon as they were finished, and that naval tactics were in a state of flux. Many ironclads were built to make use of the ram or the torpedo, which a number of naval designers considered the important weapons of naval combat. There is no visible end to the ironclad period, but towards the end of the 1890s the term ironclad dropped out of use. New ships were increasingly constructed to a standard pattern and designated battleships or armored cruisers. The ironclad. The ironclad became technically feasible and tactically necessary because of developments in shipbuilding in the first half of the 19th century. According to naval historian J. Richard Hill, there had three chief characteristics, a metal-skinned hull, steam propulsion and a main armament of guns capable of firing explosive shells. It is only when all three characteristics are present that a fighting ship can properly be called an ironclad. Each of these developments was introduced separately in the decade before the first ironclads. Steam propulsion in the 18th and early 19th centuries fleets had relied on two types of major warship, the ship of the line and the frigate. The first major change to these types was the introduction of steam power for propulsion. While paddle steamer warships had been used from the 1830s onwards, steam propulsion only became suitable for major warships after the adoption of the screw propeller in the 1840s. Steam-powered screw frigates were built in the mid-1840s, and at the end of the decade the French Navy introduced steam power to its line of battle. The desire for change came from the ambition of Napoleon III to gain greater influence in Europe, which required a challenge to the British at sea. The first purpose-built steam battleship was the 90-gun Napoleon in 1850. Napoleon was armed as a conventional ship of the line, but her steam engines could give her a speed of 12 knots, regardless of the wind conditions, a potentially decisive advantage in a naval engagement. The introduction of the steamship of the line led to a building competition between France and Britain. Eight sister ships to Napoleon were built in France over a period of ten years, but the United Kingdom soon managed to take the lead in production. Altogether, France built ten new wooden steam battleships and converted 28 from older ships of the line, while the United Kingdom built 18 and converted 41. Explosive shells The era of the wooden steamship of the line was brief because of new, more powerful naval guns. In the 1820s and 1830s, warships began to mount increasingly heavy guns, replacing 18 and 24-pounder guns with 32-pounders on sailing ships of the line and introducing 68-pounders on steamers. 
Then, the first shell guns firing explosive shells were introduced following their development by the French General Henry Joseph Paixons and by the 1840s were part of the standard armament for naval powers including the French Navy, Royal Navy, Imperial Russian Navy and United States Navy. It is often held that the power of explosive shells to smash wooden hulls, as demonstrated by the Russian destruction of an Ottoman squadron at the Battle of Sinope, spelled the end of the wooden-hulled warship. The more practical threat to wooden ships was from conventional cannon firing red-hot shot, which could lodge in the hull of a wooden ship and cause a fire or ammunition explosion. Some navvies even experimented with hollow shot filled with molten metal for extra incendiary power. Iron armor following the demonstration of the power of explosive shells against wooden ships at the Battle of Sinif and fearing that his own ships would be vulnerable to the Pixens guns of Russian fortifications in the Crimean War. Emperor Napoleon III ordered the development of light draft floating batteries, equipped with heavy guns and protected by heavy armor. Experiments made during the first half of 1854 proved highly satisfactory, and on 17 July 1854, the French communicated to the British government that a solution had been found to make gun-proof vessels and that plans would be communicated. After tests in September 1854, the British Admiralty agreed to build five armoured floating batteries on the French plans establishing the important Thames and Mill Wall ironworks within the docks. The French floating batteries were deployed in 1855 as a supplement to the wooden steam battle fleet in the Crimean War. The role of the battery was to assist unarmored mortar and gunboats bombarding shore fortifications. The French used three of their ironclad batteries in 1855 against the defenses at the Battle of Keenburn on the Black Sea where they were effective against Russian shore defences. They would later be used again during the Italian War in the Adriatic in 1859. The British floating batteries Glatton and Meteor arrived too late to participate to the action at Conburn. The British planned to use theirs in the Baltic Sea against the well-fortified naval base at Kronstadt. The batteries have a claim to the title of the first ironclad warships but they were capable of only four knots under their own power. They operated under their own power at the Battle of Keenburn, but had to be towed for long-range transit. They were also arguably marginal to the work of the Navy. The brief success of the floating ironclad batteries convinced France to begin work on armoured warships for their battle fleet. Early ironclad ships and battles by the end of the 1850s it was clear that France was unable to match British building of steam warships, and to regain the strategic initiative a dramatic change was required. The result was the first ocean-going ironclad, the Glowery, begun in 1857 and launched in 1859. Glowery's wooden hull was modelled on that of a steamship of the line, reduced to one deck, sheathed in iron plates 4.5 inches thick. She was propelled by a steam engine, driving a single screw propeller for a speed of 13 knots. She was armed with 36 6.4-INCH rifled guns. France proceeded to construct 16 ironclad warships, including two more sister ships to Glowery, and the only two decked broadside ironclads ever built, Magenta and Solferino. The Royal Navy had not been keen to sacrifice its advantage in steamships of the line, but was determined that the first British ironclad would outmatch the French ships in every respect, particularly speed. A fast ship would have the advantage of being able to choose a range of engagement which could make her invulnerable to enemy fire. The British specification was more a large, powerful frigate than a ship of the line. The requirement for speed meant a very long vessel, which had to be built from iron. The result was the construction of two warrior-class ironclads, HMS Warrior and HMS Black Prince. The ships had a successful design, though there were necessarily compromises between sea-keeping, strategic range and armor protection, their weapons were more effective than that of Glowery. 
and with the largest set of steam engines yet fitted to a ship they could steam at 14.3 knots. Yet the Gloiri and her sisters had full iron armor protection along the waterline and the battery itself. Warrior and Black Prince were obliged to concentrate their armor in a central citadel, or armored box, leaving many main deck guns in the fore and aft sections of the vessel unprotected. The use of iron in the construction of Warrior also came with some drawbacks. Iron hulls required more regular and intensive repairs than wooden hulls, and iron was more susceptible to fouling by marine life. By 1862, navies across Europe had adopted ironclads. Britain and France each had 16 either completed or under construction, though the British vessels were larger. Austria, Italy, Russia, and Spain were also building ironclads. However, the first battles using the new ironclad ships involved neither Britain nor France and involved ships markedly different from the broadside firing, mastered designs of Gloiri and Warrior. The use of ironclads by both sides in the American Civil War, and the clash of the Italian and Austrian fleets at the Battle of Lissa, had an important influence on the development of ironclad design. First Battles Between Ironclads The U.S. Civil War The first use of ironclads in action came in the U.S. Civil War. The U.S. Navy at the time the war broke out had no ironclads, its most powerful ships being six steam-powered unarmored frigates. Since the bulk of the Navy remained loyal to the Union, the Confederacy sought to gain advantage in the naval conflict by acquiring modern armored ships. In May 1861, the Confederate Congress voted that $2 million be appropriated for the purchase of ironclads from overseas, and in July and August 1861 the Confederacy started work on construction and converting wooden ships. On 12 October 1861, the CSS Manassas became the first ironclad to enter combat when she fought Union warships on the Mississippi during the Battle of the Head of Passes. She had been converted from a commercial vessel in New Orleans for river and coastal fighting. In February 1862, the larger CSS Virginia joined the Confederate Navy, having been rebuilt at Norfolk. Constructed on the hull of us Merrimack, Virginia originally was a conventional warship made of wood but she was reconstructed with an iron-covered casemate when she entered the Confederate Navy. By this time, the Union had completed seven ironclad gunboats of the city class, and was about to complete the US Monitor, an innovative design proposed by the Swedish inventor John Ericsson. The Union was also building a large armored frigate, the US New Ironsides, and the smaller US Galena. The first battle between ironclads happened on 9 March 1862, as the armored monitor was deployed to protect the Union's wooden fleet from the ironclad ram Virginia and other Confederate warships. In this engagement, the second day of the Battle of Hampton Roads, the two ironclads repeatedly tried to ram one another while shells bounced off their armor. The battle attracted attention worldwide, making it clear that the wooden warship was now out of date, with the ironclads destroying them easily. The Civil War saw more ironclads built by both sides, and they played an increasing role in the naval war alongside the unarmored warships, commerce raiders and blockade runners. The Union built a large fleet of 50 monitors modeled on their namesake. The Confederacy built ships designed as smaller versions of the Virginia, many of which saw action. But their attempts to buy ironclads overseas were frustrated as European nations confiscated ships being built for the Confederacy, especially in Russia, the only country to openly support the Union through the war. Only CSS Stonewall was completed, and she arrived in American waters just in time for the end of the war. Through the remainder of the war, ironclads saw action in the Union's attacks on Confederate ports. Seven Union monitors, including us Montic, as well as two other ironclads, the ironclad frigate New Ironsides and a light draft us Keokuk, participated in the failed attack on Charleston. One was sunk, 
two small iron clouds, CSS Palmetto State and CSS Chicora participated in the defense of the harbor. For the later attack at Mobile Bay, the Union assembled four monitors as well as 11 wooden ships, facing the CSS Tennessee. The Confederacy's most powerful ironclad and the gunboats CSS Morgan, CSS Gaines, CSS Selma. On the Western Front, the Union built a formidable force of river ironclads, beginning with several converted riverboats and then contracting engineer James Eads of St. Louis, Missouri to build the city-class ironclads. These excellent ships were built with twin engines and a central paddle wheel, all protected by an armored casement. They had a shallow draft, allowing them to journey up smaller tributaries, and were very well suited for river operations. Eads also produced monitors for use on the rivers, the first two of which differed from the ocean-going monitors in that they contained a paddle wheel. Arguably Eads vessels were some of the better ironclads of the Western Flotilla. But there were a number of other vessels that served valiantly with the fleet. All were of varying design, some more successful than others, and some were similar to standard riverboats but with armored side-mounted paddle wheels. All were armed with various smoothbore and some rifled guns. If nothing else, the experience of the American Civil War and its wild variety of competing ironclad designs, some more successful than others confirmed the emerging trade-off or compromises required in applying the latest technological advances in iron armor manufacture, ship construction and gun design, to name a few, also going on in Europe. There was no such thing as a perfect ironclad which could be invincible in every possible encounter, ship duels, standing up to forts, brawn and blue water operations. The Union ironclads played an important role in the Mississippian tributaries by providing tremendous fire upon Confederate forts, installations and vessels with relative impunity to enemy fire. They were not as heavily armored as the ocean-going monitors of the Union, but they were adequate for their intended use. More Western flotilla Union ironclads were sunk by torpedoes than by enemy fire, and the most damaging fire for the Union ironclads was from shore installations, not Confederate vessels. Litter, First Fleet Battle The First Fleet Battle, and the First Ocean Battle, involving ironclad warships was the Battle of Lissa in 1866, waged between the Austrian and Italian navies. The battle pitted combined fleets of wooden frigates and corvettes and ironclad warships on both sides in the largest naval battle between the battles of Navarino and Tsushima. The Italian fleet consisted of 12 ironclads and a similar number of wooden warships, escorting transports which carried troops intending to land on the Adriatic island of Lissa. Opposing them, the Austrian navy had seven ironclad frigates. The Austrians believed their ships to have less effective guns than their enemy, so decided to engage the Italians at close range and ram them. The Austrian fleet formed into an arrowhead formation with the ironclads in the first line, charging at the Italian ironclad squadron. In the melee which followed both sides were frustrated by the lack of damage inflicted by guns, and by the difficulty of ramming. Nonetheless, the effective ramming attack being made by the Austrian flagship against the Italian attracted great attention in following years. The superior Italian fleet lost its two ironclads, Redi Italia and Palestro, while the Austrian unarmored screw two-decker SMS Kaiser remarkably survived close actions with four Italian ironclads. The battle ensured the popularity of the ram as a weapon in European ironclads for many years, and the victory won by Austria established it as the predominant naval power in the Adriatic. The battles of the American Civil War and Atlissa were very influential on the designs and tactics of the ironclad fleets that followed. In particular, it taught a generation of naval officers the misleading lesson that ramming was the best way to sink enemy ironclads.